I'm so glad you brought that up because I think this video could come across as really superficial and we're talking about all these things and we struggle with some of these. I struggle with some of these things we're talking about today. Yeah, I, I do. That's, well, why we, that, that's why they're on the list. Because <laughs> we... But the point isn't about just how you look. It's also about how these things make you feel. It's not... Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel where we talk about all things that have to do with femininity and building strong relationships. I am Cherry Lynn and I am here with Dixie Andal and Forsyth. Hi. Hi. We are excited to be here today to talk about how to make the most of your looks. So what, is, what do we mean by how to make the most of your looks and why are we talking about this today? Well, you know, there's a lot of information out there on styles and clothes and things like that, but there isn't as much on everyday kind of details and upkeep. And especially with some people still spending a lot of time at home, just let their looks go and it doesn't matter. And it does, it matters to your self-esteem, if nothing yeah, else. Yeah, I think too. A lot of people, this is a very popular subject, I think, especially on YouTube right now. A lot of mm -hmm. women go to YouTube, they're looking for makeup advice, they're looking for skincare advice, they're looking for makeover advice. And we wanted to do one that's more centered around not only general ideas for everyone, but also inclusive of different ages and times and places in your life. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of 20 something year olds doing makeover things. And then there's a lot of thirties and 40 year olds doing makeup advice. And we kind of wanted to do something that we felt was a little more general uh, for a larger audience. Cause our fascinating womanhood is global. We have women all over the world that follow us. So we just wanted to do something that kind of generally can go for everyone. And it's not necessarily about, you know, being really dressed up and looking like pageant queen every day it's more about just making the best with what you have yeah although if you want to be dressed up every day great the goal is to feel like you are good about yourself if you can feel good about yourself really tone down stuff great but uh, these are about details that we can do so that we can feel good and present well wherever we go or whether we're going nowhere at all Yes. Okay. So we're going to dive in. Before we get started on all of our tips, we just want to clarify how important it is to have some kind of a routine. So we go through this whole list that we have and they're all great. And the advice is, is, is really, really uh, easy to apply. But if you don't have a routine, mm -hmm. chances are you will do some of these things, implement them, and then you'll lose some of them. So trying to set some habits, right? Wouldn't you say? Yes, and we've, we've mentioned before in other, other videos that it takes around three weeks to cement a habit. So if you do something regularly, kind of force yourself for about three weeks, it becomes habit and then it's easy. It's like brushing your teeth. You just do it. For example, how often do you wash your hair? Uh, do you have a set pattern or do you just wash it You know, every day no matter what? Do you wash it once a week? I, I've heard all kinds of different things and I think hairstylists would tell you so many different things conflicting advice. But the point is what works for you and mm -hmm. your hair type, your skin type, how often do you do these things and just set a routine for yourself so that that way you have consistency and yeah. you don't. Well, some people have oily hair. Some people have dry hair. Yeah. Some people have very thick hair. Some people have very thin or fine hair. And so there isn't one routine that's perfect for everybody. Yes. And lifestyle. I have two kids and they're small. I wish I could wash it more often, my hair, and it's really long, but um, I have to wash it every three days because that's what works for me now. I wish I could wash it every two days, but I just haven't found that yet. So that's my routine. So well, you'll get there. It takes, it takes time to kind of figure out how it will work. Before I had kids, I washed it every day before work. So it just depends on what you're, what's going on, but mm -hmm. find what works for you. Yes. So okay. number one, plan ahead. A plan ahead is always good for everything. It's good for meals. It's good for all kinds of stuff, especially for what you wear. If you're going somewhere or even if you're not, I always, I, I, I don't know if you do, you probably do. I look in my closet and I kind of tentatively decide what I want to wear, depending on what the weather is going to be. If I'm going uh, to a certain place or not, you kind of get an an idea about what you want to wear because you don't want to be uh, going through your closet 
and light. Find the true light because you haven't figured it out. I know. And this one's really big for me with laundry. <laughs> I know that sounds really simple for those that don't have like maybe small kids or, or whatever, but I, I have to really plan out what I'm going to wear, especially if we have some more going. Um, okay. I got to make sure two or three days before I'm washing these things so that I have them right. ready for this because the last thing you want is to be going somewhere, even if it's just, you know, somewhere with your family going shopping for the day or something. The last thing you want to do is just be standing there and everyone's waiting on you and you have to steam your clothes and you're, Oh no, I have nothing ready or nothing that matches is ready. And when to do that is totally up to you. You need to find the right time to plan ahead. It may even just be planning in your mind and you're not even physically going in your closet, moving things around. If you can, that's great. I feel like you, you do a really good job of planning what you're going to wear. You probably don't even move stuff. Do you? Like, um, Oh, I'm going to put this with this and this. with this. Oh, yes, you I do. Yes, oh, I you do. do that. What I do is I, I've been doing it for quite a while now. I, I often take out what I'm going to wear from my closet and I hang it on this hook. When I wear the clothes, I leave the hangers on that hook. So I have the hangers ready to put them back up if they're not dirty and put them back. So I don't have to hunt for a hanger. Well, some of us have clothes that get kind of smashed in our closet and they're wrinkly. And so yep. if you pick out, you want to wear this certain top or dress and then you pull it out and it's full of wrinkles, then you're going to put yourself way mm -hmm. behind. So number two, dress from the toes up. I don't know if a lot of you all out there have heard of this, but this is something I worked in retail for a really long time and we styled people. And this is something we always talked about. And when we did training and stuff, and it's something that I've always done. Um, and I, I've never really thought about it until we started writing this video. Uh, but what it means is selecting your clothes from the toes up. So either your shoes or your pants or what you pick for the day, and then you select the rest. So is this something that you do very often? I had, until you brought that up and we were going over this, I had never heard of it, but I thought that is a really, a really good idea. And of course, if you're home and you're not going anywhere, the toes up might be your house slippers or your socks or whatever you're wearing on your feet and then moving up from there to do that. Well, and this is the problem when you don't do this, and it doesn't necessarily mean everyone does this, but a lot of women tend to pick their top first, or I've even heard ladies say they'll pick things based on the bra that they have on, which is fine. But what really? ends up typically ends up happening is you just throw on whatever, like I'm talking like, you know, something that just is comfortable. And then what's even worse is what happens is that then you might end up just picking a shoe that doesn't go because it's there. And you need to think about your footwear or your socks or your pants. All those things tend to be the first things that kind of go and get sloppy, mm. um, especially shoes. Shoes tend to be that thing that the ladies just throw on, you know, the athletic shoes or the shoes that are kind of roughed up because, oh, I'm already dressed. I, I didn't even think about my shoes. Put your shoes on and they don't look as polished as the rest of you. Try to pick clothes that are flattering on you because, uh, and some of us are better at that, knowing what's flattering on us or not, but things that when you wear it, you think, I don't feel very attractive in this. I feel like my hips look too big. My waist looks too small, big. No, your waist never looks too small. <laughs> too, <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Too big or, or whatever. And, and so you try to find clothes that you, if you put them on, you will actually feel good in them. About. Yeah, I think that's a big one, accentuating what you have. So there's all of us ladies, we're hard on ourselves. We think, oh, I wish I was smaller here or I wish I had this. And I think this is more about advice that says, what is the best thing that you've got and accentuate? So like what you're saying about clothes that fit you well, if your waist is really small and you're pear-shaped, accentuate your waist right. more. If Find that silhouette that works for your body. If you don't have a small waist and your legs are a little bit smaller, just go with it and accentuate things that show off your great long skinny legs. Like you just have to kind of embrace it instead of hide. I think right. we tend to kind of hide our insecurities a little bit and then we just end up kind of giving up a little bit. Well, some of us feel like our bust is too large. Now, men find that really odd because they don't think there's such a thing, but there is with <laughs> with women. And so there are bras that actually make you look smaller. Uh, what do they call yeah. them? There's uh, minimizers. Just, yeah, I agree. I think, you know, thinking about your greatest assets that you have, the positives about you and 
show them off. If you have really big eyes, show them off. If you've got a big pouty lip and you probably don't realize how many women wish they had that, you know, just accentuate it. So, right. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. Next clean and press. This is a big one. Yes. I can't tell you how many times I've decided to wear a certain thing and I pull it out and it's stained and I hadn't even noticed it. And you know what? For those of us that are really sentimental about our clothes, you know who you are out there. <laughs> if you have something and it's stained and it's not coming out and you've tried so many times to get it out, maybe it's time to part ways with that item because, or if it's got a little rip in it and it can't be, it yeah. can't be mended. Yeah. It's like, it's not in a seam. Let go. Because if that item is in your closet and you're like, oh, I, you know, I can't really necessarily wear that, but I don't want to part with it. You might end up putting it on and the temptation to put it on is there. And there you are, that person with the ripped or the stained clothes. Or you, or you might just leave it in your closet and it just takes up space in there and you never wear it, because, but you don't want to get rid of it either. Even the whole socks, like my son has socks in his drawer that have holes in them. And I, you know, it's just like, get those out of here, throw them away. Like, Oh my gosh, them. you just reminded me I have a pair of socks with <laughs> a little hole in them and I love the socks and I can't really repair them because it'll, it'll, make it bumpy in my, I need to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just, you know, thinking about wrinkles, thinking about like what you were saying about wrinkles earlier. I think yeah. so many women put on these great outfits. I used to see it all the time when I worked in an office and they walk it and it's just wrinkled and it's like, Oh, but those, that, those pants look fantastic on you, but they're wrinkled. It's yeah, absolutely. It's just, it absolutely yeah. ruins your it look. Ruins it. It yeah, ruins, it does. It, it, it's not even about um, you know looking pretty. It's about it's about making the most. Like we keep saying, making the most of yourself and what you mm -hmm. what you what you're given for the day. Like you just ruined it with the wrinkles. So just trying right. to plan ahead. That goes all with the planning. I always have a portable kit of essential items like lipstick, lip gloss uh, that you can put on or, or even blush during the day if you're out and you need to refresh your look. Probably either a, a comb or a brush, something for your hair. Yeah, is, what do you have in yours? What do you, you probably. I, 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 have, I have a, uh, my hair's long too. I have a very wide tooth uh, comb that mm -hmm. I use. And if I'm, especially if I'm going out for very long, I always bring it. I yeah. have a little, a little pouch with mainly lipstick. Yeah. yeah. Mainly yeah. lipstick. Mine's lipstick, too. Mine's lipstick, hair ties, barrettes, just in case, you know, something mm -hmm. happens and I'm just like, ah, I gotta get a my safety hair out of pin, A safety pin in yeah. case something comes apart and you can't repair something. Yeah. Like and that. I have concealer in mine too. Oh yes. Concealer. Very important. Yeah. I have concealer. And then I used to have um, chapstick and lip gloss. And since I've become a stay at home mom, I kind of, it's a little bit smaller, but I still have one in my car mm -hmm. um, that I just, you know, emergency stuff that I have. Um, the next one, number five is posture. And that one is one that a lot of us have to brush up on often. I, I struggle with this one. I didn't, I haven't always struggled with it, but I struggled with it as a mom because I constantly find myself, you know, hunching over for my kids. And, you know, I think when you really can learn and practice how to stand up straight, sit up straight, it makes you look better. You look more confident. You look slimmer. You have just an overall uh, better appearance when you sit properly. It's so hard to remember this. It, it is. And if you, if you really have a lot of trouble, you can get a, a posture corrector, like a kind mm -hmm. of a back thing that you can put on under your clothes that kind of pulls your shoulders back. Yeah, you can wear one. And that can help train, train you. But it makes you look more confident and feel more confident. Okay, number six. Lint. <laughs> Lint, fuzzies, and hair. And when you're walking around and you have all this hair <laughs> stray on your back, it just doesn't look as polished. A roller is the easiest way to get that off because even if you can't reach it, you can you can reach it with the roller. Um, another thing that I love is I have one of those, what do they call those little fuzzy? I know, I want to fuzz call it a fuzz buster, but it isn't. It, it's a little gadget that works with um, batteries that just be, uh, cuts the little fuzz balls off your clothes if you have. Yeah, any. you can get one, I think, on Amazon for like yeah, they're, $10. They're so it's really inexpensive. You've always, I remember being a kid and you using that. It was like one of my chores that I could do. I could use it to get like fuzzies off of things. Well, it's actually very satisfying when you see yeah. it start to come off. It kind of eats it and it feels kind of yeah. good. Yeah. Number seven, eyebrows. 
eyebrows. So <laughs> some of us have eyebrows and some of us don't. But whether you do or you don't, you need it's part of your look. There's wonderful products now for putting on eyebrows if you don't have them. And if you do, if you have too many, you need to keep them plucked or waxed. What do you use for your eyebrows? Do you use a pencil or do you use powder? You use both? I yeah, I use a pencil for the to for the ends, but I use a powder for this part. How about you? I think, well, I use a gel um, oh. and I actually have been wanting to get into the tinting, but I just have so little eyebrow. Like I don't have hardly any eyebrows. So it's so dyeing them is really hard for me. I've heard of a lot of ladies dyeing their brows and it just like looks fantastic, but I just don't have enough, enough to work with to do that. But I use a gel and then I brush it. Um, and that works well for me just because my eyebrows are so fine. But I think whatever your situation is with your eyebrows, just not forgetting to do them because they absolutely change the whole shape of your face. And if you haven't kind of gotten into like what brow shape slash, you know, routine works for me, you should definitely try it and experiment because it will absolutely change. And it's also something that you can do uh, to look a little bit more youthful. If you are kind of like, oh, I'm getting a little bit older and I want to start to figure out how I can look a little bit younger, doing your eyebrows every day will help give you that youthful appearance. And it's simple. Yeah. Uh, number eight, manicured nails. It doesn't mean you have to go to a shop. I struggle with this one. You've always been so good about this. I feel like every time I see you, you're, I don't know how, but your nails are always, even if there's not a lot of polish, they're, the cuticles are really pretty and you always... Uh, you, well, you, you don't remember when you guys were all little and it was really hard when you, when my children were small it was hard and, and I use my hands a lot they get beat up a lot and some of you are the okay. same and do a lot of cleaning my hands are in water a lot and but you can at least file them and put put even a, a clear gel or something on them you don't have to go to the shop and have you know, acrylic nails or anything like that. Those are beautiful, but they're expensive and time consuming, but you can always at least not have broken and ripped and bitten <laughs> nails, which I know it's, we get a little nervous sometimes and the temptation to bite our nails is, is really there sometimes, but you feel so much better if you don't. Yeah. The, the nail biting, when you see a woman that is so, polished looking and then you look at her hands and they're either dry nails are bit off or cuticles are looking kind of, you know I mean that sounds kind of dramatic but like yeah. I've seen so many women like this where I'm just like oh my gosh she's so beautiful I always notice hair first on women I'm always like oh look at her hair uh and I see this woman you know and she looks so beautiful and I look at her hands and I'll be like oh her nails are all chipped off and <laughs> Well, actually, I, I notice sometimes when people nails are so bit that their uh, their nail beds are just like little circles. I think, yeah. oh, they're under a lot of stress. And yeah. I heard that I don't feel hard on people at all, but I feel bad for them. I think you you really stress out. Sometimes I notice it in movies. An actor will have really bit nails, and I'll think, oh, that person is really is really under stress in their private life. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think this. Video could come across as really superficial and we're talking about all these things and we struggle with some of the, I struggle with some of these things we're talking about today. Yeah, I, I do. That's, we, why we, that's why they're on the list. Because <laughs> we... But the point isn't about just how you look. It's also about how these things make you feel. Well, in past day womanhood, we always teach women that they, sh they, we want them to feel good whether they're alone all day at home or out. This isn't really as much for other people as it is for you and for your relationship with the, the ones you're closest to, particularly your guy. Yeah, this isn't about women judging women for how they look. Not at this all. About, no. Yeah, okay. They're feeling good. Okay, so next, why don't you take this one, socks and undergarments. Socks and un undergarments, you're so good about this. Um, and I feel like I learned this from you growing up, but I think we're in the society right now of some athletic wear that can be used to and from things, which is great. But I think sometimes that line of white athletic socks starts to kind of blend into, you know, your wardrobe. You're starting to wear athletic socks every day. Socks that are 
hold and stained. They don't go like you can actually buy really pretty socks that are feminine. And I'm not saying pink. I'm saying you can buy really pretty socks that go with your outfit. (laughs) And they're not all, it's not all about these, you know, athletic looking. I see so many women at the stores with these athletic socks with their nice jeans. I'm like, well, especially if you're willing to, to wait for them to come from overseas, there's some really good deals with shipping. So Yeah. And then when it comes to bras and undergarments, I think to me, this is just about fit and body type. I think there's a big trend right now with these bras that are like bralettes and they don't give you a lot of support. And I think that's great. Or, you know, sports bras, that's great. Um, If you actually are just maybe doing them from time to time in your home, but if you find yourself wearing (laughs) these unsupportive bras all over the place, all the time, you're not making the most of your shape more than likely unless you're very small chest and it doesn't matter unless you're very yes I'm, even if you're not, small yeah. i mean a sports bra i don't know you're not necessarily making the best of right your and it's all about making the most of what you have yeah and there's shapewear we went over this in one of our other mm-hmm. videos there's shapewear out there if you really like this maybe for more of the working ladies If you're really um, uncomfortable around wearing like a nice dress pant, but you're not sure what kind of undergarments you should be wearing, there's really great shapewear for you that can help your self-esteem in wearing those items. And also uh, skin care with exfoliating. I would love to hear, I would love to hear about your moisturizing tips because you've always had such smooth skin and it's always seen, I know it's not, you make it look like it's really easy. (laughs) That's because I, know you have a routine. <laughs> I do. I often, this is, you know, spilling my secret here. I often follow my mother-in-law's advice and use Vaseline to take my eye makeup off. It makes a great moisturizer, but you don't want to wear it in the day, obviously. And I use uh, a simple moisturizer from doTERRA. It has a lot of essential oils in it that I love. It smells good. Mm-hmm. Smell is really important to me. Something with no smell, I just am kind of disappointed. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. smell like anything. I use, sometimes I, for the rest of my face, I use Makeup Remover by Atomi. It, it's a skincare line. And I just mm-hmm. use different things. I don't just use one brand for of their whole line because mm-hmm. I like to not feel locked in to a whole line. But you can if you want. One of the biggest things we wanted to talk about with moisturizing in particular is not is not forgetting moisture. Like you need, I don't know how to say this without saying sounding strange, but moisturizer everywhere, like hand cream. Yes. Yes. You get out of the shower. Are you putting a really nice lotion on your leg? It's going on your feet. (laughs) I like, I like, it's kind of, it's kind of pricey, but I like lush body moisturizer. There's one that they have that I like. I kind of use it sparingly. So I make it last longer because it is kind of expensive, but I really love the smell. So I I like it and it works really great. And your hair, are you putting oil on your hair? That still counts as moisturizing. I put castor oil on my hair. I always have every year. I put castor oil on my ends. Um, I always have, and it's just part of my routine. This goes back to routine. Um, What works for you? Some ladies out there, you know, they don't have fine hair like me. They don't maybe need to do that, but are you using a mask once a week or once a month? Um, Just moisture in general is going to give you a youthful appearance. It's going to help fight wrinkles. It's going to help fight all the dry kind of flaky skin that everyone has. I mean, for the most part, we live, <laughs> we live in a time where we have so many wonderful choices. Our ancestors. Oh my gosh. If you, if you research what those people used, if they had any moisturizer at all, like lard and stuff like that. And, and we just have so many sophisticated things that some of them are inexpensive and some of them are not, but there's a lot of choices. Yeah, um, and I think too, putting something on at night, something, mm-hmm. anything, depending on what your skin is, but before you go to bed, put something on your skin that helps set it for the night. While you're um, sleeping. Next is um, hair, your hair. Hair. So you're, this is a big one. I know you talk a lot about hair, so I probably should just let you take this one. But the only little two cents that I want to put in is for the moms out there, because I'm a mom. I want to be the advocate for the moms, um, is even if you are insanely busy, there's no reason why you can't do a, a neat bun, a neat ponytail. I'm not saying throw it in a t- ponytail without looking in a mirror, but like some kind of find something that works for your face shape for your hair type and do and repeat, 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 repeat. Um, if you're busy 
and you just don't well, feel like if you you're going to do like your hair is longer and you want to do it up because babies, as we know, hang on our hair is I would get for me, I would get hair accessories to go with it so that it isn't just plain every single day. A cute scrunchie. Uh, there's some really cute hair uh, clips, uh, barrettes. Those, what are, what are they? They're those sticks. What do you call them, Cherry? You put it in your hair. They have like chopsticks. Oh, they're ornament. They have ornaments on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, all kinds of clips and things you could put in your hair to make it look special that day. That can Yeah, there's scarves. There's so many things. And I know that sounds yeah. kind of intimidating for the ladies that are a little bit more simple, but there are so many options. Look around for things like that the ladies that have really really short hair we've had a lot of questions from ladies with really short hair and like how do I make it look feminine how do I make it look nice I think this is where it's just about caring for your hair uh, using really great hair product and if you really want you can do a little headband or you can do a little jewel yeah like yeah talking about. yeah and, and that's fine I think do that's something great. don't just do yeah. nothing and say do something. just if you're tempted to throw on something and call it good, you know you're probably not going to look polished. Yeah. Do something that is respecting of yourself. And if you really are going to go to the grocery store or wherever and you've got your sweatpants on or whatever, you're not feeling proud of what you're wearing and maybe that's just your day that you're having, just do something with your hair and my goodness, you're going to look so much better. Hair, and, so make hair and makeup. And yeah. you will always you will always look feminine. And notice notice how you feel when you do it. Yeah. Not just yeah. doing it, but notice how you feel that day when you feel like you look good. Lips. Yeah, so I read somewhere, I can't remember who said this, but uh, a, a naked lip is like a cupcake with no icing. And I love that. And I've always kind of remembered, I don't remember. The point here is, is that when you put something on your lips, even if it's somewhat nude, I know in this specific video, we are talking about pink and red um, or something in the berry family. But uh, if you can put something on your lips, it just takes you, again, it makes the most of what you have. Uh, it's, you're making the most of what you've, what you've got. So the reason why we're suggesting pink or red is because, or something in the berry family is because that color not only makes you look more feminine, but actually gives your whole face a little bit more of a youthful and more healthy kind of look. And most women look good in some kind of shade of berry, no matter what your race, your age, it, you can go light, you can go extreme, whatever goes for you. You well, always have something on that's usually in this rose family and it looks great the on reason, you. The reason that that is true is because natural healthy lip color, the blood in your body that that's making them pinker. And mm -hmm. so that's why uh, shades in the pink and reds look good on everyone because we have blood going through our body and it, it naturally colors our lips. Our lips are naturally colored more. But as if we have diminished health or as we get older, for some reason that does that tends to not be as vibrant like babies. They always have these beautiful pink lips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and they're just so beautiful. I wish we could but yeah. not me. I should have got it. Not, not you me. <laughs> I have to do something or people say, boy, you're tired looking. Yeah. And I think, you know, it takes two seconds and carry it with you in your purse. It takes two seconds to just, even if you do, uh, I've seen tinted lip balms that are yes. barely anything. Just yeah. do even that if you can. Um, it's just going to, it's just going to make you look, it's just going to make you look better. Accessory matching uh, bags and shoes. Now, so there's a lot of there's a lot of debate about whether you should match your bag to your shoes, and I know over time this has been kind of like um, a topic with fashion of like, do I match? Do I not match? Do I completely do you know something coordinating? I don't think that it really matters. I think it just matters if you put thought into it. And what I tend to see these days is these bags that you just wear every day. You just have the same bag and you wear it every day, and you throw it on with whatever. Um, and what tends to end up happening is that you're throwing it on with athletic shoes. So you have a nice leather bag with Nikes or you have, you know what I'm talking about? Or you have a backpack and you're wearing nicer shoes. Um, I've just seen this a lot and I don't know, it may be something we just don't talk about enough, but, or maybe you don't have any accessories on that's fine, but the one that you have on doesn't match the 
the one utility item that you have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you notice well, celebrities, they, they always do match, but not all of us can have a, a whole closet full of bags that we can change. And I have enough stuff in my bag that I don't want to change it every day, but I, I carry the lipstick. And I sometimes have to put my cell phone in there. And you have a tendency to wear more dressed up shoes and more dressed up bags. And so they tend to just kind of go together, which is great. And you probably don't feel, this is probably really easy for you. <laughs> it's probably really natural for you. I only wear uh, athletic shoes to the gym because and, I, yeah. I feel like I'm wearing pizza clothes when I wear them. That's just me. And yeah. for anyone who doesn't know what pizza clothes are, those are the clothes you wear we call them that because they're the ones that are baggy, stretched out, that you put on when you're depressed and don't care. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'd like to note about flip-flops, flip-flops can be really cute. They can be really pizza clothes, too. They originally, from what I heard, came from Japan, and they used them there to go into the bathhouses. They weren't for all they wear. They wore them into bathhouses, and they so wearing them out in public and around was kind of like, we had to grow into it as a culture that it wasn't just super sloppy. They, but there's really cute ones now. There's all kinds. Some of them are really comfortable and really cute. But be careful with them because they can easily become pizza clothes, pizza shoes. Pizza shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, I'm really glad you brought that up. When I was in retail, I worked in two different stores. The first store, seven years. The next store, nine years. Both stores, all that time. Every summer, we did the same thing with our employees. We sent out a memo to every single employee that said there will be no flip-flops in the store for, you know, to wear while you're working um, at all, of any kind. And the, the, every single time, the amount of what uh, that would come through was just you know, comical because they were so confused why they couldn't. And let me tell you why. <laughs> the reason why they weren't allowed to wear them is exactly what you're saying. It becomes really sloppy. And the last thing we wanted was our employees helping women with clothes and <laughs> the um, noise that they make. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds not very polished. It makes your outfits suddenly look not very polished. I don't know what it is, but there were times where we would allow a really nice leather one and you didn't hear anything and they looked really nice. And we'd be like, Oh, you know what? You can, that's fine. You can wear those. And I think that has always stayed with me when it comes to flip-flops. I kind of stay away from them because I'm like, oh, flip-flops. But they're actually, you're right. There are some really great ones There's out some there. really cute ones. There's ones that are covered with beads. And, and uh, I've seen some really cute ones. But they do make that flip-flop sound. <laughs> that's for the pool. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that yeah, sounds that's, yeah, to me yeah. for the pool. But, you know, I know that they're comfortable. But yeah. just, just be careful. careful. Just be Just careful. Because. Okay. Bronzers and highlighters. I am, you introduced me to those. I, I'm fairly new to them, but you are not. These, I didn't discover until I was in my early 20s. Um, but when I realized what bronzers and highlighters do for your face and for your skin, I just couldn't believe that I had never, I had never had them. Now I'm really fair skin. So this has made a huge impact on me. It may not make as big of an impact on the ladies that are not strong, struggling with fair skin. So there's a lot of celebrities that are wearing these and it, my goodness, it just makes your skin look so youthful. You can shade different areas and it doesn't take long and it doesn't take much. And there's some out there right now that are so inexpensive. You can look on well, YouTube videos to find how, how it's best to use it for your particular shape of face. You don't have to just experiment. Yes. And you don't want to go real heavy on these things. Like you said earlier, not looking tired. Sometimes when well, I'm not Some wearing, of you are so young, you don't look tired, but I have to fight it. So I fight it all the time. Well, I feel like I've always battled looking tired, you know? Um, and this is, aside from like mascara, which I feel like makeup, we could get into a whole other thing with makeup. We're not getting really as much into makeup today, but, but bronzers and highlighters, you know, to me, that almost feels, it almost is like part of my skincare routine. If you haven't ever experiment, experimented with bronzers or highlighters, just try some. And just see what you think. And like you said, look at YouTube videos and, and yeah, see how to work. Ton, there's tons of them. The last thing on our list, number 16, is footwear around your house. And yeah. I've got, you've got one sister, one daughter that almost only wears socks unless it's really cold in the winter. She goes through a lot of socks because she likes the, how that feels. And some of us go barefoot. When I was growing up in California, that's all I wore was nothing, bare feet. Parents used to get frustrated because they could hardly get shoes on me. But now, 
I don't do that. And I live in a colder climate and I wear slippers. And I try, I, I don't like wearing ratty slippers. It ruins my whole look. Yeah, I love this idea of a house shoe of some kind. If you are a person that doesn't wear shoes in the house that and you're barefoot, great. Just make sure you do something to your toes. Um, but if you are doing a house shoe, I think that's really sweet and, um, and it looks really cozy and it feels great and you're taking care of yourself. And I think it's just that extra little thing that you can do to make yourself look nice. And yeah. you always wear really cute socks in the house. I love cute socks. And, and when I discovered them, you can look on uh, either eBay or uh, Amazon under sweet socks because mm -hmm. that's a lot of the ones from Asia. Come, but they've just got the real cute ones under sweet socks socks and there's so many cute ones and they're cheap you just have to wait a few weeks to get them and and korea has so many cute socks i've never seen so many cute socks as korea then and, and they have sock places all in every corner and then then i think boy they're so creative with their socks and you can buy a lot of these things online okay well i hope that <laughs> I hope this was helpful for everyone. I, I think this is a really fun subject and I thank you so much for telling us all of your tips and, and giving us your advice. This was really fun. And if you out there watching, if you have any other tips for making the most of your looks, definitely drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. I know there could be hundreds and hundreds of things. These are just our favorites. And if there are any subjects that we covered today that you want to hear more about, also drop that down below and we can either do another video on it or we can get into a discussion about it. Right. And we're here every week, so don't forget to check back with us next time. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye.